Okay, so today we are going to be covering the image analysis protocol. The first thing you're going to want to do is download the GT Fiber UND uh, compressed file from GitHub. Upon getting this file from GitHub, you're going to want to unzip this download and move contents to a designated folder. Um, in my case, this folder is a folder corresponding to MATLAB makes it so that the files that I use are added to the pathway. So let's see here. I'm going to extract to the documents folder and then the MATLAB folder. All right, now that we've extracted it to the appropriate folder, we can go ahead and open this in MATLAB. As you can see, this folder is now located on the pathway. I'm going to open it. Um, one thing that's very important, you need to go ahead and add to path. Um, <clears throat> sometimes this doesn't happen automatically. If you ever get an error message upon trying to launch GT Fiber by typing GT Fiber into the command window, um, it's usually just because it's not added to the pathway, so make sure every folder here is added to the path, particularly this functions folder. Alright, now we are going to go ahead and launch the GT Fiber GUI. What we're going to have to do here is simply type in GT Fiber into the command window as is displayed. This launches the GUI and prompts a couple of user inputs. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is enter the image width. Important notes I have here on entering the image width. Um, Whenever you are entering the image width, you have to make sure to check your image size using ImageJ measurement tools and appropriate scale factors associated with the zoom on the microscope. When entering the image width, the value must be entered in the thousands of nanometers range. If dealing with images exceeding this range, as in we, the case we are currently dealing with, you must scale by a factor to get that value in the thousands of nanometers range, and then scale all image analysis results according to this factor. So for example, if we have a 20x image that has a width of 439 micrometers, according to image J, uh, this implies that the width of the image is 439,000 nanometers, and this greatly exceeds the thousands of nanometers range. To get this value to the thousands of nanometers range, we must divide by 100. This yields a width of 4,390 nm times 10 to the two. Uh, we're gonna input that value as image width and keep track of that scale factor of 100 for the rest of the uh, the rest of the analysis. We're going to go ahead and select and load a sample image here. I will just go ahead and use this image. And let's see here. The appropriate scale factor here is exactly 4,388.571. We're going to make sure to invert color. Um, later on, we're going to disable the scale parameters with width. Um, and you're going to want to make sure to leave the GUI open. It makes things much easier when selecting other images as these parameters don't update. And, uh, it enables you to essentially process images faster because you don't have to re-input all of these values. Okay, so we have selected invert color. Now we need to input the correct parameters. So Gaussian smoothing auto updates to about 4.38. That's fine according to a bunch of tests that we've run. 
Gaussian smoothing uh, typically works best at a value of 5 for images of this width. Uh, leave diffusion time as is. Top hat size is essentially halved to 17.5. You're not going to want to use a depth of threshold for a lot of these images, at least with the ones we've found on our microscope. Um, we find that global threshold is much more appropriate and scale factor, a global value of 0.4 typically works best. This noise max area, uh, this can be left as is. And fringe removal, uh, we have a lot of little tiny particle kind of things here, so we're going to want to increase it just a little bit to remove any sort of noise that may result from a lack of sensitivity. Okay. And we'll go ahead and update these fiber vectorization parameters as well. Um, you can leave most of these the same. The one thing I find very useful, however, is to update the max curvature to 70. Otherwise, uh, whenever these uh, fibers are vectorized, it's typically an overly linear approximation and you won't have as accurate of results. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this filter. It's also important to note that it helps to have a decent computer in this case. Um, these analyses can take a while. Uh, the actual first filter that's run through takes a little bit, but the stitching fiber process typically takes much longer. All right, so that's been filtered. Looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and stitch these fibers now. All right, that's looking all right. Go ahead and close out of these. And it's very important that you click this fiber length and width uh, button under the plotting section here. This actually has a little uh, line of code written in it that essentially saves a MATLAB field containing the data that we need, which is then extracted by a script that we're going to run here in a second. So let's go ahead and run this. All right. As you can see, this gtfiber2test.mat file was saved. This is sort of uh, just a figure that we're using, or structure rather, that we're using in order to contain this data. All right, so now that that is complete, we are going to open the gtfiber2 analysis, GT analysis comp script. All right. And as you can see here, this is going to extract the width and length vectors from the uh, field that, or structure that has been saved. One thing that you have to do here is update the name of the vectors and figures and variables uh, such that they match the images that you're analyzing. This is essentially hard coded in. I could not figure out an appropriate way to update this automatically. Okay, so we are looking at 20x pH 11 is the name of the image, so we're going to save these accordingly. We're going to run this. Okay, so we previously ran into this area, unrecognized function or variable IMS. I make sure to click on this structure. And then, now you should be able to run it and it will extract the appropriate length and width vectors associated with the image. And these essentially contain all of the lengths and all of the widths of the fibers detected by the fiber stitching process and the filtering process. And it's very important to note that yes, you do need to hard code these image names in.
Right, and we'll go ahead and analyze another image so I can demonstrate how to compile everything. Okay, so remove the scale parameters option here. You do not want to have this uh, turned on when you select your next image or else it's going to override all these values. You're going to have to input them again and it'll slow you down. We'll go ahead and open up the next example image. 20x pH 12. All right, this is found to be the same image width as before, and therefore we do not have to worry about updating the parameters. You put that. As you can see, all of these stay the same. Make sure invert color is still selected. Run the filter. All right, there's the resulting skeletonization. Now we're going to stitch these fibers. All right, here are the resulting vectorized fibers. Now we're going to run the fiber length and width option under the plotting section. All right, and then that previous structure that we had was just overwritten, and we can extract the new length and width vectors upon renaming them within the MATLAB code. Go ahead and close out of all of these. All right, so this gtfiber2test.mat file has been overwritten, and we can extract the appropriate updated vectors. We just need to rename them. So rename them accordingly. And we're going to run it again. All right, as you can see, they added the new length and width vectors to our workspace. All right, so it's very important to note that you should double click on the actual um, GT Fiber 2 test mat in between running each uh, image or each analyzing each image. If you forget to double click this in between, it's not going to update, and you're essentially just going to have two vectors that are composed of identical data. So you're going to want to do this for each image in your folder. Um, for sake of example, we're just going to consider this as a two-image folder. Obviously, you're usually going to have about 14 to 16, at least in our case. Um, obviously, you can have as many as you want, but in our case, we typically have 14 to 16 images in these folders. Now we're going to open up this name modification script. Running this script uh, compiles all lengths and width data vectors from the folder of images you have finished analyzing and compiles them into respective length and width vectors that contain all fiber lengths and widths from all, five, from all uh, images analyzed in the folder. Um, just make sure to change hard-coded names as needed, much like the previous file. As you can see here, we're only going up to pH 12, so we don't want all of these other uh, variables to try to be loaded because they do not exist. This is uh, pretty much coded for a 15 or 16 image folder. So we'll go ahead and comment these out so that they don't actually run. Again, this probably isn't the most efficient way. All right, now we're gonna have to update this all widths uh, vector as well. We only go up to pH 12 here, so we'll go ahead and close this off, comment out the rest. Ready? You're gonna wanna update these names according to what folder. Um, we're not using single transducer 10 ml images here, we're actually using the organic, so I'll save it as org. And similarly, we're going to have to do that for the length vectors as well. All right, now we update this vector.
comment out the rest. And again, this isn't for a single transducer 10 ml sample image folder, this is for an organic, which is essentially the non dewatered uh, control sample. Right, I believe everything has been updated and we can run this. Okay, so the error here is we forgot to name this accordingly. Make sure to up or update all of the hard-coded names or else you're going to get errors. That's got an ST10, we need that to say org. Try it again. All right, that worked. So now we have a length vector and a width vector. We had to flip the length vector because it was previously saving as a column vector and I believe we wanted it as a row vector. Actually, I believe it's vice versa. Okay, so now that we have all of this completed, we can open up this compiled histograms refined figures. This is gonna essentially create the histograms that are displayed in the paper. Um, the sort of final result of the image analysis is concluded in this code. So again, we only have the organic. So we need to comment, comment out the rest. Typically, you want at least two folders analyzed here, because um, we have figures that essentially compare two separate folders. So th these figures are going to look a little bit different. I'll probably just code it so that it's uh, you know, plotting the same thing twice. This is all just a bunch of uh, statistics stuff that we didn't end up using. All right, and now we're generating the figures. So again, we do not have ST10, we just have org. Kind of redundant here, but I'm plotting two of the exact same histograms over one another because I have not analyzed the separate folder for this example. Okay, update the titles accordingly as well, but I'll just leave them as is because of the redundant nature of the thing that I'm plotting. Make sure to update all of the names. All right, now that that's all been updated, we can run this code and it'll generate the desired histograms. All right, these look as expected. Um, again, as you can see from the color change here, these are just two histograms plotted over each other that are identical because I didn't analyze two folders. This isn't actually 10 ml per hour, it's two control groups. But yeah, this would be the length and this would be the width generated. In general, um, this is the general. This is the format used for the histograms in the paper. All right. And whenever you're done, make sure to uncomment out everything, such that you have it in sort of a standard way. Obviously, this is up to some sort of preference uh, of the user. But you know, if you commonly are going to analyze three or four folders, maybe only leave you know the corresponding number here commented out. I'll leave it as is for now.
All right, and that concludes the GT Fiber UND image analysis tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at jharrison86 at students.gotech.edu. Thank you for your time.